today we are going to be starting a more automation controller on a Lampton Ultra Dry. This control works the same whether it's on a Stormore Easy Dry, GSI Top Dry, or Lampton Ultra Dry. We're going to start out by inspecting the wiring. As we check the burner, we're going to turn the gas on. We want to turn the stop switch on. So we're going to drop the chutes. That way any bolts or nuts that the installers left in the top will fall out. Crank them up till that cable clamps against. It's the one reason why I like the Lampton Ultra Dry. They don't get plug dump shoots. Other than that, they're the same thing as Stormore Easy Dry or GSI Top Dry. Another thing I did last time I was here is down there you'll see it the the ribs in the floor. I uh, I put sealer at them ribs. That way wheat does not leak out if he ever dries wheat. Okay, so if you notice. We have a rotary switch there with a 12 inch extension. That's what we use is the bin master rotary level indicator. And that'll turn alarm on down on the side to tell them when this top drying chamber is full. Okay, we're gonna fill it up. I'm gonna go down and test run the fan and heater just to make sure it works. We're gonna throw it in manual and we're gonna hit start fan one. Looks like she's running. And we're gonna turn the burner on. Oops, the burner switch is on. We need to turn that on. There, now 15 seconds. full of corn and now we're going to set our temperature to 125 to start that's just a starting number we ain't necessarily going to go to that and then our cool time is in minutes we're going to put that down to about three minutes uh, we'll finish our cooling in the bottom part Drying is in hours. We're going to put that to four hours. Uh, we will not. We will not go over four hours for drying. We turn the power on. Every time you start this controller, you have to start it in manual. You hit start. Once the fan is running, you switch it over to time and sensor. 
Then we let it run. Once it gets up over 100 degrees, uh, we will decide how long we're going to run. Ice on our propane line. We need to get rid of that. So we're going to adjust the vapor coil. On this one, the ring burner, we pull it out to warm it up. Because it has a small vapor coil and a ring burner. There. That should start to take the ice off the propane line. That ice is starting to melt off slowly. Gonna work its way down the pipe melting. So we don't want to make it too hot. We just want it to melt slow. I want to make sure my burner is cycling from high to low. So we're running a 10 on high. Just wanted high enough so that it cycles high to low to know that we're up to the set point. There, now it went to low. We had overfilled this top to where the grain overflowed because the breaker wasn't on for the rotary switches. But with it being 25% corn, with running for 40 minutes, we've shrunk down to the height it should be. If we wouldn't have overfilled, we'd probably want to top it back off again. We have a 24 foot dryer here, 24 foot in diameter, top dry slash easy dry slash Lampton Ultra Dry. We have a 44 inch 15 horsepower fan heater. We have an 18 inch 4 horsepower inline centrifugal cooling fan. The size fans and heaters, both cooling fan and heating fan, determines how long it will take to dry the batch up top. And plenum temperature. We're running a 175 degree plenum temperature today. We started with corn that my tester shows is 25%. We are, I think, like almost two hours into drying right now. And we are right at the verge where we should almost add some corn. The only reason we did not have to add corn on this batch is because we overflowed it when we started the batch. Since we had overflowed it, we have just about enough corn in here to do the batch. We're going to run the whole batch like this, but I would normally recommend keeping it down six inches, six, eight inches in the center, and then doing a refill about one hour, 45 minutes to an hour into the drying process. We've been running for two and a half hours and it was steaming. We could see some steam coming out and now the steam has about stopped. So I'm going to set this temperature to 110 because I'm guessing we're going to be about two and a half hours to take 25% corn down to 14%. So now it's jumping to 111. So we're going to set this at 112. And when it gets to 112, 
it will shut down and we're going to call it good. Then what we're going to do is drop that batch, put another batch in, and then tomorrow morning we'll let it cool overnight and then tomorrow morning we will take moisture samples out of the bottom and see what our end moisture is. But I'm pretty sure that we're going to be down below 15. So it blinked to 12 degrees, 112 degrees, and uh, you see that little red light came on saying that it reached temperature and our burner shut off. And now our timer went from our dry time to our cool time. Our cool time we have set about four minutes. Uh, no reason to have it more than five minutes. Three minutes is about enough. And as soon as that timer is up, then our fan will shut off and we'll be ready to dump the batch. Fan shut off, time to drop that winch. We're going to drop the corn and then load it up and put another back. Okay, as soon as that's empty, takes about 30 seconds to empty. And as soon as that's empty, we will crank that up and fill it up and start all over. When filling the dryer, you always want to start the fan and heat when your dryer is about half full. That way the grain flows down and you get your top dry fuller and you don't, it don't settle down so much while drying. 